Hello, lovely people. I'm K3N. Hello, sorry, my hands weren't there. It's at a bit of a weird angle. Um, I'm K3N and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be tea dyeing and generally grunging up some papers, some cloth, and some threads. And I've got my camera set up at a, an angle, hopefully, so it can get more of my desk in, but also because I wanted it up, up high out of the splash zone. Um, so before I talk you through what I've got here, the first thing I'm going to do is get my tea brewing. So I've got a big jug, big heat proof jug, um, and I've got my tea bags. Unfortunately I didn't have the box anymore. These are Thai Fu normal English tea. If you're not in England I think they do call it English breakfast tea. But I find, you can experiment with all different kinds of teas, but I find that the best is black tea um, and as strong as possible. So I know that Thai Fu is pretty strong, um, so normally for this kind of quantity of dyeing I might take 10 or 12 tea bags. The other thing you can do if you drink tea, and I don't drink black tea anymore, nobody here does so I have to you know, buy it and use it just for this unfortunately. But if you drink tea you can save all your tea bags when you've had your cup of tea um, in a big jar or something and then I'd use say maybe twice as many because they've already been used if that makes sense. So I'm just going to chuck them in. One, two, three, four, five, six, um, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, let's do thirteen, twelve, thirteen. Baker's dozen. So I'll put that away. And here I've got my water. It was boiled, but I've brought it upstairs and I've messed about for about five or ten minutes, so it's a bit off the boil. But boiling is also fine. So I'm just going to pour it in there, carefully, not to burn myself. And hoping that the steam doesn't um, you know, make the camera steamy. Get it all in there. Come on, last little drop. There we go. I'll put the kettle away. Excuse me, putting the kettle away. I'll do my best to stay in shot. I really hope I do. So now I'm going to give it a stir. Um, I've just got a what do you call them chopstick. Being careful not to break the tea bags. If you if you use loose tea, you can also absolutely use loose tea, and you can either just you know let the bits go in there any old how, or you could make a little bag of. Um, some cotton muslin or you know a bit of silk or something and put the tea in, make a big tea bag basically um, if you didn't want to be picking bits of tea out of your fabric or you could make it and then strain it and then use it anyway so there's my tea brewing so I'm just going to set that aside and I'll show you the other things <clears throat> I do have to keep going to check that I'm in shot. I'm in shot all the way up there. Yeah, okay. So um, first thing, the paper. I've got some just regular sketchbook paper. These are sketchbooks that I buy locally. They're pretty cheap. Um, and it is 130 grams per meter square. I have no clue what that means in, you know, pounds per whatever it is. Um, but you could probably find that. But just to show you, it doesn't really matter. This is just what I can buy. It's not that thick and it's not that thin. Basically, you can use any paper. And there's an A3 pad. I like to use A3 pads because I just find them more economical in terms of getting pages out of them. Um, and I've just torn into three so that it will fit in my tray. Uh, I do have a bigger tray outside and often I'll do a big you know, just whole sheets, but I didn't want to bring my great big tray in here, so I've pre-torn a few bits. Um, the other thing I will say quickly, most paper, paper has a grain, and usually the grain runs top to bottom, so it's worth it if you're making books or journals and things, to try and tear your pages so that when you fold, you're, tear, you're folding with the grain, it just makes for a sturdier spine. Just a little aside. So I'll put that away. You've seen that. Um, if you're thinking of using pages in a journal that you want to stitch into the paper, what you can do is, um, excuse me, get a, a needle, you know, just a normal sewing needle with no thread in it. Just find one, anyone will do. And then before you commit to using the paper, you can just go through with your needle. Am I in shot? No, I just got there a bit. Just go through with your needle like that as if you were stitching and just check that the paper's up to it. I mean obviously you'll make holes. Do it on a scrap, not on your good pages if you mind. 
Um, but that's, you know, audition the paper in advance. Don't do that in the shop. I don't think they'd like it. <laughs> don't do it and say, K3N said we could. Please don't do that. Um, so there we go. So that's the pages. For the cloth, I'm going to grunge up. Those are gloves which I will put on. Shout at me if I forget um, when I start messing with the rusty stuff. Um, I'm going to do some commercial cloth. Now these are scraps that I've been given or whatever. This is one of my bundles. And out of it I've pulled things that are just too bright for me. You know, personal preference. Um, so I've got a little pile here. And what I've done, I wouldn't normally do this, but just so that you can see later, I've kept a little bit of each separate that I won't tea dye and then we can compare afterwards. So that's that. I'll set that to one side. So I've got this bit of bright green. Some of you are probably going, oh, that's lovely as it is. Don't do don't do this to it. But, you know, I, I won't use that like that. That's just too pretty pretty for me. So that's going in. Um, there's a bit of um, blue and white, which is nice as it is, but I'd prefer it if the background was a bit more tea-like. This I've tea dyed before, and I'd like it tea dyed, so I'm going to do a bit more. <clears throat> Excuse me. This again is a bit bright blue and white, so that's going in. That's a bit of lilac -y colour that's not me at all. This is really not me and I don't even know if tea dyed it'll be me but I'm going to give it a go. There's two bits of that um, and then there's another colourway slight, slightly less bright but still and then there's this piece which again is you know limit but I would like it if the background was a bit bit darker. So those are my bits. So I've only got a little, I'm not putting huge lumps in because I'm, I'm using that jug that you just saw me make the tea in so, you know, you want to leave it room to move about. Don't get carried away and start throwing in yards and yards because it'll be all blotchy and weak. It's best to just do little bits. It's a pretty easy process to do just the tea dyeing, so you can do little and often is the key. And the other thing I want to put in are some threads. Now, I've prepared a few of them. These, again, were gifted to me. Um, and these are just way too bright for me to use. Um, again, some of you will love them as they are, but personal choice. So these are just left one skein just to show you what I do. If you put it in like that, you absolutely could, but you'll get a what's called a resist where the, where the paper is. You could take one paper off and put one paper in the middle and put it in like that if you didn't want to be messing about winding them. But then just be aware that the bit round the middle, one, one section on you know every length, will probably be slightly lighter. The T will seep in there a bit, but um, not completely. You could also take those two skeins off and then just tie something around the middle to hold it. But I just do this. I don't know why. It's a longer way of doing it, which seems to be my thing. So I just wind it around my hand, off the holding the skein loosely so it will pull, but so I don't get a big tangly mess. Um, if I'm doing bigger quantities outside in bigger pots. I sometimes wind round a stick, you know, I get like a broom handle type stick and wind it round that. Um, especially if I'm doing, you know, like a plain cream or white thread and I want to do quite a lot of it. So I'm coming to the end. Stuck on there. There we go. So then just, I just leave a little... Oh, no, I've made a knot. That was silly. That was silly. Don't make a knot, don't do that. So I leave a little tail at the end, like that, and then I just lay it sort of, you know, the, the key is getting as much surface as possible. Like I said, the, by capillary action, I believe is a scientific term, the tea will soak in. Um, but And then I wind round two or three times, and then for the final turn I put my finger in the way and go round, and then I just pull the thread through. You don't want it all coming loose in the tea and tangling up with all its friends. And then I pull it, not too tightly, but just enough to hold it like that. So there's my little pile of threads. So the fabric and the thread I'll do last. And then I've got this other thing as well that I wanted to show you. <coughs> which um, I've got a huge stack of this stuff. I, I bought it in a flea market here, uh, Brocant they call them, 
box upon box upon box of old linens of various kinds and this is one of the pieces. Now probably if I was in England and I'd found just this one thing somewhere there was no way that I would contemplate doing what I'm going to do with it but since I've got so much it's actually an apron that you can see it and you see there it's monogrammed PP PP paper piecing anyway um, but it's really I think it's linen it's really marked with age and it's quite long and goes on quite a bit. Um, it has been washed but you know that's just age marking. So it's already got this marking on it um, and there's its two little ties on this and it's all handmade. I mean I, <laughs> I hesitate to tear it up but I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, there's so much of this here you know it's, it's, it's precious because it's precious but it's not rare if that makes sense. So um, because my page is, I want to do a new, another journal and um, there'll be a tutorial coming with paper and cloth pages interleaved and bound in. So I'm down to do the paper for that and so I thought I'll do the pages with this. We'll see. If it come, I might do it whole and then decide when it's done if I'm going to rip it up or not. So I'm going to do that in with the papers. <coughs> now what I should have done with this, and I would if I was downstairs outside, I should have soaked it first so it's wet. Um, so if you're going to do cloth like this, all, all the cloth actually and threads, if you if you give them a good soak first for um, a couple of hours in just some you know normal water, uh, it kind of opens up all the, all the fibres and makes them more receptive. So I, I should really have done that, um, I just forgot. <laughs> but you do that. I'm just going to go with it as it is. So to do the papers, I've got this grungy old tray, which is just a you know a roasting tray or a grill tray, tray or something, which um, I think it actually came from an old oven that broke and the oven had to go to the you know recycling yard. <clears throat> but I kept this because it would be useful. But you can pick things up like this in, in uh, yard sales or, you know, junk shops, places like that. Or if you really can't find something, uh, you can just go and buy a cheap turkey roaster or, you know, something of that kind. But try and, try and find an old one. Give a home to an old one if you can. So all I'm going to do is... Oh, I'll just show you these other things. I've also got here some... These are coffee grounds out of my coffee pot, so they've already been had coffee made out of them. Um, optional, not necessary. You could also use instant coffee if you don't use um, proper coffee, you know, proper coffee, you know what I mean. And I've also got this which is posh French salt um, and it's the grainy kind, the, you know, the salt crystals. You don't have to have posh French salt, you see it? That's the posh salt. It's widely it's what we use here you know it's you can you can just use normal table salt if you like or again it's t utterly optional you could just use the tea but I'm going to use my posh salt since I've got some um, and the final thing I've got is this this little cauldron is or was my camping cauldron I used to take it camping to do eco printing when I was camping I'm going to put my gloves on and be a good girl if you're handling rusty things please wear gloves um, I must confess that I don't usually, but I know I'm not sensitive to it, unless I've got wounds on my hands and then I will. But I'm setting a good example, so I am going to put gloves on. See how good I'm being. And also I'm aware that my hands are very much on view these days, so um, probably a good idea to keep them reasonably clean. So in here I've got some rusty bits. I'm going to move up again. I keep moving up where I normally would be if it was flat, but because it's on an angle. Um, so that's a, an old plate that's rusty. Um, I got some old bulldog clips that are rusty. If you don't have a collection of rusty scrap, what have you been doing with your life? Um, start making one. Again, optional, but you know, this is obviously a very, very small amount of what rusty stuff I've got. These are just, and I'm looking for flat pieces because I want to layer them between the papers. That's an interesting part of an old garden tool of some kind. It's a shame you can't all come round here and with a bucket and take some of my rusty scraps. These are pot menders when they mended galvanised, oh I don't suppose it was galvanised, metal buckets and watering cans. You'd put two of these together like that 
with a bit of cork between around the hole and there's a little nut and bolt that tighten them up but they make nice little printy rusty printy things some more flat bits um, is this interesting looking at rusty bits um, that's an old saw blade um, what else what else some sort of broken roundy things but just rusty things that are flat is the is the key um, and these obviously I thought I could maybe clamp with because they're not flat but I'll see if I use those or not so I'll put that away for a sec <clears throat> and then in this little jar I've, I've somewhere I've got a huge jar of um, little rusty washers but I don't know where they've gone I can't find them I've even been in the man shed looking for them which is you know it's impossible to find anything in there I do not understand the system there is no system but I've got a load anyway I could only find four and also in here I've got some um, rusty pins that were in some sewing stuff that I acquired and rusty hair grips just little rusty things and this I won't use this today because it's not flat enough I just wanted to show you isn't that beautiful we've got loads of these they're, they're holding the barn together well you know this one isn't anymore <laughs> hopefully it wasn't critical but that's a handmade nail it's just a beautiful thing I just love it anyway it's just to show you <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> so let's get going so I've got my tray I'm going to start with my papers I'm going to put my bundle away that I don't want to be dying or printing. So I'll start with my papers. So I'm just going to put in the bottom of here just a tiny bit of tea just to start me off. Just like that. Can you see? Move you in a bit. Just like that. Um, uh, by the way, I've got an old sheet down as a drop cloth which I, it's reasonably, a reasonably new old sheet because the old, old sheet that I had been using is now so lovely and marked and stained, if you like that kind of thing, which I do. So I'm uh, using it, you know, as cloth. So this is a new old sheet. <laughs> and underneath I've got a bit of plastic, which was some um, packaging, you know, just because it, otherwise it'll soak through. So yeah, protect your surface. So I've got my little bit of tea in there. Um, now if you're only tea dyeing you can just slop loads of tea in but when you're rust printing as well you need to have the moisture but there also needs to be oxygen coming in there for the rust to do its thing so that's why I wouldn't want it all under water or under tea you know because then there's less oxygen able to get in so I'm going to just start with um, I'm going to put my papers in and just dip them and if I was tea dyeing, I would just dip, dip, and then take them out and lay them to dry, and that would be that. But I thought I'd do something a bit more. So you know, if you want to tea dye, see my I, I don't clean my tray deliberately because all then the all the stuff that's left in it from whatever's been in there makes nice marks as well. And then you can um, sprinkle on a bit of your. I'm just going to get a spoon, otherwise it'll all stick to my fingers. Got an old teaspoon here. You can just sprinkle on some coffee grounds if you like. Um, I could then turn that over or I could have sprinkled coffee grounds first and sprinkle more. It's fun if nothing else if you like messy play. I'm going to get um, something flat. Let's have that saw blade and just lay that on there. And maybe some of my posh salt, why not? More is more. And then I'm going to do another bit of paper. <clears throat> um, what I might do actually, um, outside I would have this in something bigger and flatter so that I could dip my paper in it as I went. Uh, well, I'm going to just manage and dip my paper in there. Can you, you can't see, but I'm dipping my paper in the jug just to soak it in tea. See, so like that, both sides. I'm going to lay it on. Actually, I'm going to move it all up a shade. Because then I think I can get two stacks, and that's handier than having one big stack. So I'm going to lay that on, and I'm going to do some more sprinkling. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Some more salt. 
<clears throat> the salt's not fixing and it's not there as a fixer or anything it's just the crystal salt I find it reacts with the tea and it makes little marks um, and I, I don't use vinegar either a lot of people use vinegar when they're rust printing I just prefer the colors let me get that away as well I just prefer the colors um, with with the tea it's the same principle, it's tannic acid in the tea and acetic acid in the vinegar, so it's an acid reaction. Um, but I just prefer, I, I'm not really a huge fan of that bright, bright orange. But if you like that and that's what you want, then, you know, with your rust you need to use vinegar. Just regular white vinegar. Pop some of these pot menders. Oops, sorry, I just headbutted you, I hope it didn't hurt. <laughs> um, have a couple. Oops. have some of these little pins. It's really difficult to pick them up with gloves on. There we go. That'll do. That'll do big. Get my next, where's, oh, do you know what, I've put those on my paper. Oh, I can't get up my paper. Then my next bit of paper, get that cocktail stick out, uh, chopstick out of the way. Just dipping it in the tea in a slapdash manner, put it on the top <clears throat> and the same thing again, sprinkle sprinkle with the coffee grounds such fun, it's like being back in kindergarten or play school depending on what you call it in your country of, of where you live some rusty bits I know where I need to go up the road from us is a, a kind of place where they sell and mend really old tractors and farm machinery. <coughs> and I need to go up there and, um, I didn't do salt, did I? And um, have a forage about on the floor or ask them nicely and flatter my eyelashes, flatter, flutter my eyelashes. Because I'm sure they've got loads of rusty old washers. I've got endless rusty bits, you know, big bits and old chains and... Uh, bits of spade and you know huge big bits but it's those little washers that are the that are the treasure the real treasure and I use them as well I, I stitch them and attach them to things and what I do is I paint them with a bit of um, matte medium so that the you know they're not rusting all over everything In fact, I nearly got some out that had been painted with matte medium to use here, but obviously that wouldn't work anymore. I thought, oh, I've just found a whole load of them. Oh no, they're all matte medium. <laughs> come on, out you come. Put a bit. Um, I think I'll keep that big bit for the top because it's quite heavy, and I'll keep that big bit also for the top. Just checking it out in shot. There's a bit of wire, and if I can get it to be flat, I can use that. And I'm a poet, and I don't know it. There we go. That'll do. Peek. And um, let's have a pot mender over there. Let's have a bit of that. Is that flat? Yes, it will flat. <coughs> I'm surprised Fred Fred's not getting involved. He's just over there off camera by the radiator. This is just his kind of thing to get involved in. So I'm so... Pardon me, soaking my next bit. Mm. Oh, sorry about that. I kind of breathed the wrong way. Oh, I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, the order in which I'm doing it isn't really important. It's just the order I'm doing it in. You know, you could do rust, salt, coffee. Um, salt, coffee, rust doesn't really matter. And like I said, all of these extras are optional. You could just soak your paper in tea. Dig in the bottom and get some more. Oh, there's another thing. These I do still pick up. That's a beer top, you know, from the pavement. Be careful of your hands if you're doing things like that. Don't hurt yourself. Um, one of those. Some more pins. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Go on. I only get the idea. How much more have I got to do? Well, I'll go on, and if it, this part gets really long and the same and the same, 
I can just edit. Oops, I'm bringing the tea bag with me. Back in there. Let's do it in a different order, just for fun. It's not quite flat, but sometimes the rusty things will make little holes in your paper because they're sharp, and especially if they're not completely flat. I don't mind that, but you know, if you mind that, then look out for it. And make sure to use pieces that are absolutely flat. Coffee. <clears throat> Next piece. Am I halfway through yet? I can't remember how many pieces I had now. I think, I'm, I think after this piece I'm going to start here, my next stack. So just for reference, I think I've got 13 or 14 pieces of paper. But you could, you know, make loads of stacks. But I wouldn't put more than maybe six or seven in a stack for that same reason of getting the letting the oxygen get in. Um, how long you leave it is also a factor. I'm going to leave it probably until tomorrow. Um, obviously you have to be a bit careful handling wet paper because it is more fragile, but it, I find that it's sort of sturdier than you might think. Well, you don't want to be sort of, you know, swinging it around your head or whatever. Just be aware that it might tear. Coffee. Salt. New bit of paper. Well, it's kind of overlapping the edge of that, but I'm not worried. I'm not bothered. It'll be fine. I'm running out of rusty bits. I thought I had plenty. Oh well, when they're gone, they're gone. Just get them out so I can see what I've got left of the flat pieces. Um, see, now I'm doing it in a different order. I might forget something, but it's all good. doesn't matter. And it's very, I mean, I'm not stitching, I know, but I'm making things for slow stitch, a slow stitch project. But again, it's process. It's focusing on the process. Um, so to me, it's still all within that same ethos. And apart from my paper, which is new, and um, my salt, which is new, and my tea bags, which are new, but which shouldn't be, really. I should be using tea that somebody had drunk. If only there was someone that drank tea here. I do drink tea, but not black tea. I like um, red bush or robust tea, or I make herby teas from the garden. Which the French then don't call tea anymore, they call it a tisane. That's a different thing to them. I have my last little hair grip and a few more pins. Obviously be careful with um, pointy things as well. That you don't spike yourself with rusty things because of tetanus and all that. You don't actually get tetanus from rust. That is something that many people think. But tetanus is often where rusty things are. They like the same environment. It's just something I've someone told me once and I looked it up, I checked it. Being a librarian that I am, I always check these things and she was not wrong. So yeah, it's not that rust gives you tetanus, it's just they like to live in the same environments. Nearly there. Last two bits. Um, mm -mm. Save those for one more piece. That's all right. I'm probably just just all right with my rusty bits. In fact, I'm going to put those big bits on the top so I can use my last bits here. In England, I had a huge collection of rusty bits, not as ginormous as I have now. Um, and um, I used to find it in the fields if they'd been ploughing. I used to walk the dogs in, um, you know, around farmers' fields. And when they'd been ploughing, I would go and pick up rusty lumps that had been turned up by the plough. And we had a friend, or we have a friend still, um, who's a farmer. And some of the things I would take to him 
and ask him what they were, you know, if they were unidentifiable to me. And um, he had a real Somerset, he was a real Somerset, he is Somerset born and bred, you know, real West Country accent. And he would say, oh, that's a bit, that's a tine off a baler, that is. Or, um, oh, that's a spring off a combine, you know, whatever. And then one day I took him this huge encrusted lump of I don't know what. And he said, that's a bit of rusty old metal, that is. <laughs> Made me laugh. Even he didn't know what it was. Right, so that's my final layer. I'm going to put these on the top, on the very top. I'm not going to use those clips in the end, I don't think. And um, what I'm going to do now is um, turn that that way. Get those away because I don't need them anymore. I've still got my plate, my rusty plate. Get this in, make sure it's in shot. And I'm going to get my pre-soaked apron, pretend it's been soaking in water. Actually with old cloth it's less important because it already is soft and open. If you are using new cloth it really does need a soak, maybe overnight even. And if you do buy brand new cloth, um, which I don't, and I would encourage you, if at all possible, to find... Um, oh, Stella's now sat on my foot, so that's me stuck in one place. Um, to, to find second-hand cloth to do this with. Um, but if you do have new cloth, you do have to scour it. That's another reason I don't really like to use new cloth. Because it's got all kinds of sizing and products in it to make it look all crisp and, you know, how people like it. Um, but then you have to give it a good boil wash and maybe even use washing soda or something like that. But old cloth is already all soft and, you know, the fibres are receptive. So I'm wringing that out. Not I don't want it dripping and I don't want it, um, you know, wrung out bone dry. And what I'm going to do is just lay it over that. See, it's already gone a, a colour. Excuse me, I might have to... You probably can't see anything now. I'm just trying to fold it somewhat. Stiles, what's your problem? Um, so that it'll fit in my tray, but room-wise. There we go. And I'm just going to plop it on there like that. And just see what happens. So it's serving two purposes. It is um, keeping it moist underneath. And it's also Stells. Sorry, sorry for that rude interruption. Um, it's also, um, you know, rust printing itself. And I think I'm going to get that rusty tray in, in there as well, why not? Um, I don't know if that's going to print on there, but we'll see. Why not, why not? And um, I'm just going to leave that like that. What I might also do is just lay plastic over the top. I'm not going to wrap plastic round. And I really, I'm not a huge fan of plastic, but sometimes it comes into the house, you know, and packaging of things or whatever. And so I save those bits to reuse. Um, it's better than it going, you know, wherever it ends up otherwise. So that's basically that. I'm just going to leave that like that. Um, I'm probably going to leave it like that, maybe overnight. And then tomorrow I'm going to take the apron off the pinny, short for pinafore, English for apron, um, and then see what's, what it looks like underneath. And then I might then leave it with the apron off if I feel that that needs more um, oxygen, air to it. And if it's getting dry, I might just scatter some more tea over the top or, or something. You want it, like I said, you want it to be damp, but you don't want it under tea, as in underwater, but under tea. Um, but do you see that already? Look, can you see already what's happening there? See the marks off the rust? And that's the iron reacting with the tannin. It's an tie -in, a tie-in, a tie -in anin, no, a tannin-iron reaction. And that's what gives you the marks. Um, okay. So that's that. I'm going to put that aside. Uh, oh, the other thing I might do as well is when I've put my bit of plastic over, I might put a couple of heavy books on it just for contact. Okay. Um, right, so here's my tea. So I've got, I'm just going to give it another stir. Because it's bags, I'm just going to leave them in there. 
they're not gonna do any harm. You could also, and if I wasn't going to do cloth and thread, you could also take the bags out and throw them all on top of your papers or, you know, in your bit of cloth or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, I'm just going to leave them in there so it gets nice and strong. And then this part is really simple. Again, imagine I've pre-soaked all this fabric in water, which I should have done because some of it's new. Um, and soak it for, you know, a few hours or overnight. But because you, do you see now, do you see, do you see? It's not, it's sitting on the surface rather than soaking in because that's new cloth and I have no clue whether it's been washed or not. So I'm really going to give it a good squeeze and then open it up again so it can swim around in there freely. And I always put the cloth in first and then the threads on the top because I don't want the threads getting tangled up any more than it has to be. Ditto, this is crisp new fabric. Do you see how it sort of beads on the top? So you really want to make sure it's getting squidged in. So I sort of wring it, push it in, wring it. But yeah, the thing to do is soak it overnight in, in water. And it can just be cold water, you don't have to heat it up. And don't go, oh, that's nice, I'll keep it like that, because number one, it, some of it will rinse away, and number two, it will dry much lighter. So you always need to make sure that it's darker than you want it to be. This, With this, I don't have any pre-ideas about how I want things to be. Um, as long as there is some change to these little bits of cloth, I'm happy. I'm not, it's not like, you know, doing Procyon dyeing or something like that, where you can say, I want that shade of red or that shade of whatever. It's, it's, you do have some control once you understand what's going on. Um, but I just like to work with, you know, a little bit the unexpected. So that's that bit. And now I've got this bit, same thing. And this little pile, how many pieces did I put in so far? One, two, three, four, five, I think that was. Um, just to give you an idea, if you say the average scrap size is about 8 inches square, um, I've got in total 5, 6, 7, 8, let's call that 9 because that's too small a bit. But I've got te say 10 pieces that are about 8, eight inches square, um, just to give you an idea. But it, it it's more, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do is... Um, no, I'm not going to do that. I was thinking of tipping it into here because this has got all kinds of residue of eco printing and stuff. But I won't do that because that won't be fair because you might not have that. So I'm going to stick with just the tea. How kind am I? I'm so kind. I'm so kind. I'm lovely. I have to keep telling myself. <laughs> That's um that's Yorkshire again. It's like oh I'm I'm so good, and then behind that comes a aren't I? So it's kind of if you say something nice about yourself, you have to put a sting in the tail. That is re I really hope that becomes um because even the back of that was too much for me. Some people will love that. It's just personal taste, and I did used to love that, but I've just changed as I've got older. So really work it in there. And like I said, that's the key. I've got my 13 tea bags in here. Um, and I'm just using these, however many I said, little bits of cloth, not huge whole sheets at a time or anything like that. If you wanted to do a big whole sheet at a time, then you'd probably need 100 tea bags and, you know, an old tin bath to, to put it in. So I don't do that. Just little bits. And this bit, two bits the same. This is actually older cloth, so it's more absorbent, receptive. And, you know, even in here, because it is quite a small volume of, of liquid, 
they're all sort of scrunched up so they will be blotchy if you don't want it blotchy if you want it even you need to have a much more you don't necessarily need more tea if you know you, you, you've got the same quantity of, of cloth you just need a bigger container and more water there's still the same amount of um, stuff you know tannin in there to color the cloth but it, it needs more room to spread its wings Right, so they're all mushed in there, smushed in there with the tea bags um, in among them. And now I'm going to look now. My threads I'm going to be a bit more gentle with because I don't want them to get all tangled up. So I just gently, with my finger, just poke them and I count them and try and remember how many there are so I remember to get them out first. Because then if one hides underneath and you start, you know, going in willy nilly, slapdash to get your cloth out, you might tangle up one of your skeins of thread and I'm just giving them a gentle can you see what I'm doing? I hope you can see what I'm doing a gentle squidge with my fingers just to make sure they soak in the tea there are many many ways of doing this this is just how I do it and this is what I'm doing everywhere with everything I'm just showing you how I do it it's not this is the right way it's just my way it's really yeah. garish I really hope that comes out nice and it's really um, resisting the moisture. Same thing with those little skeins of thread they could have been soaking in water. I should have done that. Just too lazy to go. I do have water upstairs but it's one tiny little wash hand basin you know just for washing your hands when you've been to the loo or if you're Australian when you've been to the toot. <laughs> I've learned that recently. Um, but it, you know you can nearly only get one hand in at a time it's a tiny little sink and you can't get anything under the tap is my point so anyway basically I was too lazy to go downstairs and get more water right so I think that's okay I'm just going to leave them in like that I might just gently pull some of the tea bags up to act as little weights to hold them under the surface I forgot to count how many there were but never mind I'll just be careful do you see I'm just using the tea bags as little weights? Oh, that's not a tea bag, that's a bit of cloth. There we go, one more. Is there one more tea bag? Handy. There's one. Oops, now you go under the tea bag. Naughty. Right, there we go. Okay, so that will sit overnight. It's, it's uh, what time is it? It's lunchtime. It's lunchtime, no wonder I'm hungry. So I'm probably leave that 24 hours, but again, it's variable. And I think I'm going to take it downstairs stairs with me and put it um, next to the range. We've got a wood fired range. So if you've got something, a radiator, or if you're in the southern hemisphere, <laughs> you know, you've got the sun, put it somewhere warm. Um, it, it's not truly essential, but warmth always speeds things up and makes things work better. So I'm going to go and put it by my kitchen range and um, then I'll be back tomorrow, but for you it'll be the blink of an eye um, with the results.